Hello, everyone, and welcome back yet again to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed that first segment. Before we get into our second segment of the day here on the show, I do want to remind you yet again to consider liking, following, and subscribing to the show and the network. It is greatly appreciated by all involved. And also, you guys have been doing a great job with this as well. Keep on making yourselves available to the super chat. Super thanks and super stickers features here on YouTube. Great way to communicate with the show. Great way to get your questions, comments, and concerns on air. So if you do feel so inclined throughout the show, it is greatly appreciated by me and a great way to make this show as interactive and exciting and hype as possible. Without further ado, let's get right into our second segment of the day here on today's show. Talking about some high-risk, high-reward players for this weekend. The five guys that I've compiled from my list for this week as Andre enters the chat, I hope that these guys really can sustain positive kind of glimmers of optimism we've seen from them over the past couple of weeks. Because these are guys, like I said, boomer bust guys. These guys you can't necessarily trust every given week. But I think that in terms of matchups, in terms of what we've seen from them throughout the season, I feel confident that they're good for at least a couple of of good games a year at certain positions in fantasy. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start at the quarterback position. And this guy certainly seems to fall in the category of people who play it safe at the position. He's not necessarily the most explosive of guys, but this past game really goes to show as Andre, as a good question, is Garrett Wilson and Godwin for Justin Jefferson worth it? I think that it's an interesting trade. Because you're really asking the question, is two really high-end, borderline wide receiver one in fantasy guys worth a superstar level wide receiver one in this situation? And I think that in terms of what that means for your fantasy team, you're getting guys who can supplement each other very well. For Justin Jefferson, who just supplements your entire team. But at the end of the day, the reason why I don't think it's worth it is because when I look at Justin Jefferson, he's just someone who is so special at the wide receiver position that he counts for two players. And this is not an indictment of Garrett Wilson and Chris Godwin, but when I looked at them this year, Godwin was off to a good start, but he has calmed down. And I think the Bucks really are paper tigers on both sides of the football or starting to become paper tigers on both sides of the football. And Garrett Wilson right now, he has room to grow, but he really hasn't necessarily translated his former success to what this present-day Jets team is becoming. And so I feel like it's too big a risk to risk it all on a superstar player, even though you know the Vikings offense is starting to become more about the sum of its parts than just Jefferson. I feel like right now it's just too big a risk to risk it all on two guys who really are starting to lose a little bit of fantasy value right now. But I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope that you can take that advice with you into your trade here. But I do want to get into a little bit of some high-risk, high-reward players, starting off with Justin Fields, the guy who I was mentioning a bit earlier. As Andre says, I then have Jamar Chase, Jefferson, and Olave. So that kind of pretty much proves, because that's perhaps one of the more solid wide receiver rooms in fantasy you could potentially have. Yes, I have my concerns about Jamar Chase, but he seems all right. He seems to be over the contact situation. And the Bengals have some manageable games on their schedule coming up to get back into the thick of the AFC. Talks about Jefferson. And Olave rounds it out very nicely. I think that he's always good for a couple of good games in terms of having him as either a flex or a wide receiver three on your bench. But in terms of high-risk, high-reward players and Justin Fields, he's someone who I feel like makes sense in a deeper league, but... If you are in, say, a smaller league, he's going to be an interesting play. As Tap to Learn mentions that Andre has a couple of studs in his team, and I completely agree. 
The thing about Justin Fields is that I don't know if last week's game was a harbinger of things to come, but it certainly showed he's growing and maturing as a quarterback. And in terms of fantasy, it might be a little bit too late to put so much weight on a player of his status, but he is showing some moxie at the position. And for those of you who may have underestimated the depth of the QB market and are kind of struggling at the position right now, Justin Fields is someone you can monitor week in, week out. I also like him in terms of a dynasty perspective. I don't necessarily know how long this whole Justin Field as a Steelers quarterback thing is going to go on because I still think Russell Wilson could have a say in this QB room, albeit he's running out of time and he's on a short leash in that regard. But at the end of the day, Justin Fields could be someone who could be a sneaky play in the future, more long-term than short-term in fantasy. So he's just someone to kind of monitor. This matchup this week could be one that he could be someone in a top 15 situation in terms of the QB position. And then let's go to the wide receiver position because there are a lot of players who I've kind of been disappointed in and want to see more out of. And there are a lot of players who have kind of exceeded expectations, but I'm kind of wary of. This guy kind of falls somewhere in the middle, and that is DJ Moore. He's going up against the Rams this week. I personally have him my fantasy team, and I can tell you how topsy-turvy he has been. Last week, there was a little bit of optimism there, a little bit of glimmer of hope. He had eight catches, 78 yards, and one TD in that game against Indy. And this week, he's going up against a Rams defense that really isn't as threatening as it can be in the post-Donald era. So... Look for the Bears' offense to remain a unit that is competent enough to string together a couple of good drives. But all things considered, he's not going to have one of those games where he's going to really break out. I think that as, as long as the Bears are going to continue to find their way, he will find his way as well. Because Caleb right now, in a situation where he's starting to learn more about this wide receiver room, and thus, he's going to try and implement as many of his top receivers as possible. So week in, week out, DJ Moore is going to be someone whose his numbers are going to be very Jekyll and Hyde, if you get what I mean, in that kind of offense. So look for DJ Moore to week in, week out, be someone who is a matchups-oriented player. And this matchup could pretend to favor him. And then another receiver who I'm kind of intrigued by, but not really, because of the nature of this offense, is Demario Douglas. He had a pretty impressive performance against the New York Jets, but then again, any performance, as Andre said, the Bears need to fire Shane Waldron. He's just horrible. Trust me, Andre, as a Seattle Seahawks fan who had to live through his tenure as our OC for several years, I get that point. I think that he is just very weird in how he interprets an offense, an NFL offense at that. And yes, you can also blame the Bears' offensive line issues and things of that nature, but he's really not impacting Caleb in a positive way. He's really not necessarily focused on getting the ball quickly out of his hands because I think that this wide receiver room if there's one thing that's kind of underrated about them or underestimated about them is their ability to have yards after the catch. Yes, a lot of them kind of tend to be more vertical guys or guys who, as Andre also says, dude, I didn't believe it at first, but seeing the plays he calls in the red zone, it's like, what the hell is he doing? I completely understand you because, yeah, he's not getting the best out of the traits these Bears wide receivers possess. Like Romo Dunze can be great in the red zone. As KJ Frederick, welcome to you, and as the chat as well. If Dell and Nico Collins are out, should I shoot my shot with Schultz, my tight end put spot, full PPR? Well, I haven't necessarily heard that much about the Texas injury report. I have heard more about Dell and the concerns with him. I'm not sure what is going on with Nico Collins, but the reason why I think that I'm going to say no to shooting your shot with Schultz is because this offense really is more predicated around 
getting Joe Mixon involved, yes, he might be out of this game as well, but if he does play this game, Joe Mixon's going to have more of a say in it in terms of the run-to-pass philosophy this offense is starting to bring in. And so I don't know how Dalton Schultz is going to be affected by that. I'm not sure he's going to get as many targets as people think because last year they did not have a running back as talented as Mixon. But then again, you know, if both Dell and Collins are projecting to be out, then he could be a big play. You still have Diggs in that offense, and C.J. Stroud might look to him a little bit more often. But, you know, it's an interesting question. I'm going to say no for now just because of the nature of this Texans offense. But in the future, he could be a nice little matchups-oriented piece for you. But I hope that helps, at least for this week. Getting back to uh, Andre's point, I kind of want to do mention that as well. The Bears really are in a weird spot. But I really hope that DJ Moore is there. Before we go to take a quick break, I want to quickly go through what this guy that we kind of lost a little bit of time for. Demario Douglas, make of his performance from last week, as you will. Going up as a 49ers defense that... I'm not as scared of with all the injury problems that is going through. Javon Hargrave is going to be out. Nick Bosa has been struggling with injury. They still are weakened in the secondary. So potentially the Patriots could have an opportunity to pass more often than they have in the past couple of weeks. So look for Demario Davis to maybe build on that strong performance at the very least by one Patriots wide receiver. And then Jalen Naylor is a guy who is kind of a deep sleeper in a lot of leagues, but going up against a Packers team that you're really going to have to diversify your pass attack for because of the strength of their secondary. So I think that Justin Jefferson will have a big game, but I want Sam Donald to continue to try to spread the ball around to confuse this Packers secondary. And not not for nothing, Jalen Naylor is one of those guys who he's not going to put up many yards, but he can be a very nice little red zone threat for the Vikings in that offense. And the last but not least, how about Quentin Johnston? This will really depend on if Justin Herbert plays, but he still has been performing better than last season when he was a rookie. As Andre says, go pack, go. We're humbling Minnesota. That is your ultimate opinion. I think it's going to be a very good game. I think that it's going to be closer, though, than a lot of people expect, but I will give the pack the edge if, like you said yesterday, Jordan Love plays. But at the end of the day, I think Jalen Naylor could be a nice, sneaky X factor in this game for Minnesota at the very least. But then Quentin Johnston against the Chiefs, it is going to be highly dependent on if Justin Gerbert, Herbert plays. But, you know, for what it's worth, he has been playing better than what we saw from him last year. Already has more touchdowns than he did all of last year. So if, you know, Justin Gerbert, I mean, why am I saying Justin Gerbert? Justin Herbert throws the ball more often in this game as he's trying to play catch up with the Chiefs, then I could see a potential big game for Quentin Johnson. But like I said, monitor that Justin Herbert's uh, injury at all costs. But that will just about do it for this thing. Let me know what you think of my high-risk, high-reward players in the comments. As Andre says, Addison's back too. They have a crazy receiving core in Minnesota. Yeah, I completely agree. And they're also missing Hawkinson at the tight end position as well. So bring it all together, and they could be building something there in Minnesota that's quite special. But we do have to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we're looking ahead to Sunday Night Football. We don't necessarily get to talk about Sunday Night Football as we're not a weekend show as often, so I wanted to get that in. But we'll be right back after this short break. Looking for your daily fix 